this standard fluid. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we'll go back to standard fluid when we get into when we finish on this. All right, so this is for a particle. When we have a system, we can add all the kinetic energy. And because it's not helpful, we can't keep track of the motion of every particle. What we can do is to keep track of the center of mass. So we break the velocity into the velocity of center of mass and the relative velocity to the center of mass. And this square, I will give the formula to you if it is on the plane. I will tell you a plus b square equals a square plus two a dot b plus b square. So this square will give you the center of mass velocity square plus two bcn plus the relative velocity and plus the relative velocity squared. And all the other particles have the three same terms. If you add all the cross terms, you will get that the sum of their mass times relative velocity equals the uh, mass times the center of mass velocity minus the same thing. So if you add all the cross terms of all the particles, you get zero. So that term doesn't need to be taken out. So you just add all the first term, which is about center of mass, and that is the center of mass and the energy. And then the rest will be called the internal kinetic energy. Okay? Any questions? Shows that you can write the total kinetic energy of a system as the kinetic energy of the center of mass, which is just the one half m v squared for the center of mass. Mass will be the mass of the total mass will be the total mass of the system. V C n is the speed of the center of mass. And you have the internal kinetic energy. To define the kinetic energy, we again look at the total work done on um, the system, which includes the work done by external force, and there are going to be external non-conservative force and external conservative force, and there's going to be internal force. So we break the work into three different types, and that will change the kinetic energy, which includes the center of mass and internal kinetic energy. We move them to the outer side and get the work done by external non constant force will be the change of center of mass kinetic energy plus internal energy and external potential energy. Here we, all right, let me do it the other way. So if I only keep this term over here, because only this one is non-conservative, internal force are assumed to be always conservative, like gravity and spring force, then we have the chance of 
set of mass and an energy in general kinetic energy, you move the two works around the side, so they both get a minus sign. And you call them, you call the work done by external conservative force with a minus sign as the chain of external potential energy. The work done by internal force with a minus sign as a chain of internal potential energy. And if you add the internal energies, the kinetic and potential, you get internal energy. So at the end of the day, you get a chain of chain of mass and the energy, internal energy, which include this term and this term. And the external potential energy. Okay. So this is the most general energy conservation stuff you can get. You can apply it to any system, such as agricultural system. For agricultural system, the sun emits sunlight. Those sunlight will do some external work. to your leaf. And the particle inside the leaf will have energy change. You don't see the leaf start flying. You don't see it start uh, doing some weird stuff. You don't see the height change, so the potential energy doesn't change. So it will cause the internal potential energy to increase. And those correspond to the forming of glucose from photosynthesis. So you then eat those internal potential energy to digest your crop, so their internal energy turns into whatever energy you want. This is basically how agriculture works. So we can also apply energy conservation into fluid if there's no external non-conservative force acting on the fluid, which means like the pipe is smooth, there's no friction on the pipe, then you can mass this zero equals the change of kinetic energy, internal energy external potential energy into the Bernoulli's equation. You just divide everything by volume, then you get that this divided by volume will give you one half mv squared, but instead of m, you have the density, because mass divided by volume is density. And then internal force turns out to be Internal energy turns out to be pressure. Pressure turns out to be the internal energy density of the water. And this point of energy gives you mgh divided by E, which is your pH. So you have the Bernoulli's equation. And if the water is not flowing, 
that you have static fluid, which shows that pressure plus working edge should be a constant. Which means that if you have a cup and you look at this point and this point with distance edge, this point will have the same pressure as air pressure. And air pressure here, let's call it pressure of the water. You get that. Let's say here is edge equals zero. So P air plus rho G edge equals P water plus plus the edge here. So I look at this point. This point has P equals P air, rho G edge equals rho G edge. How about here? I have P water plus what is the rho G edge for this point? Zero. Yeah, zero. Because this thing is a constant, so P plus rho G edge at this point should equal P plus rho G edge at this point. So you get that the water pressure should be bigger than air pressure by rho G edge. You can also derive it by F equals MA. You just, you just choose a column. Then there's going to be force acting on the top, which equals pressure times area. The force from the bottom is also pressure times area. And the sum of them need to balance the gravity on the water column. So you get, let's take up as positive the water times the area minus the pressure from the air because the air is pushing down. Gravity is also going down equals zero. So you get P water. You can divide both sides by area. Move this to the outer side and this to the outer side. It should be P air plus and G divided by A. And if you multiply the denominator and denominator by 